Hi, my name is Kelly Williams and I am a fishing skills instructor with the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. I'm also the watershed specialist with the Clearfield County Conservation District and I'm on the board of the Allegheny Mountain Chapter of Trout Unlimited. I'm also the co-chair for the PATU Women, Diversity and Inclusion Initiative. And I have been fishing since I was just a little kid. And uh, we used to go fishing with my dad. We would usually go to a local lake or a pond and most often fish for something like a warm water species like bass. And I was always fishing near shore for like the little guys, the real little bait stealers that are about that big, little panfish. And I just, you know, my love of fishing grew out of that. Um, eventually I got good enough that I had my own rod and it was the rest is history. Um, from there I started trout fishing and I've since moved on to fish for carp and largemouth bass and pike, basically anything I can go fishing for. And nowadays I still go fishing um, and I still love to go fishing to lakes or ponds for bat panfish because they're so easy to catch. Um, so this time of year is a perfect time for fishing for panfish uh, because they spawn starting in May when the water temperatures reach about 65 degrees and they're often found in lakes and ponds which are, means they're close to shore and pretty easy access for beginners and for families and they're just fun to catch. Um, you know once you get into a lot of them you, you could just be standing there for an hour and catch a whole bunch of little panfish. So today we're going to go ahead and talk about the basic equipment that you need to fish for them, um, some tips and tricks, and I'll show you how to catch a fish and also how to release one. Remember, anglers 16 years and over need a PA fishing license to head out fishing. Today I'm fishing at Clow Lake in Jefferson County, not far from Punxsutawney. It's a nice sized lake with lots of shoreline to fish from and a launch if you want to fish by boat. There are a lot of lakes just like this one all across Pennsylvania. If you need help looking for one to get started, there will be a link at the end of this video to Best Fishing Waters for Bluegill, Pumpkin Seed, and Crappie on the PA Fish and Boat Commission website. Today we're going to fish from shore because pretty much anyone can do that. If you don't want to or you can't walk far due to mobility issues, you don't have to. It's also nice because if you have kids, you don't have to worry about walking far either. You can be to the water within minutes of parking your car. Clow Lake is a man-made lake, meaning if it weren't for the dam holding back Jackson Run, this lake wouldn't be here. This 27-acre impoundment is owned by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and managed by the Fish and Boat Commission for Public Fishing and Boating. To find panfish, you want to look for the right kind of habitat and structure. They are prey items for bigger fish or birds like osprey and herons, so they like to stay close to some kind of cover for protection. Things like weed beds, cattails, stone piles, piers, or other man-made habitat structures. Speaking of man-made habitat, this lake is also part of the Fish Habitat Improvement Program, which means over the years, the PA Fish and Boat Commission built habitat structures and placed them in the lake. Here's a map of the habitat structures in Clow. The maps for other lakes in the program can be found on the PFBC website. This is also a great way to find lakes for fishing. We're targeting panfish today, but the lake also has largemouth bass, rock bass, catfish, and other species you might catch as well. In the spring, while the water's still cool enough, you'll also find trout because the Fish and Boat Commission stocks them here in the cooler months. As I mentioned, we're going to focus on panfish, but what are panfish? This name refers to the small pan-sized members of the sunfish family, hence the nickname panfish. We're talking about bluegill, pumpkin seed, and crappie. So why focus on panfish? As I said before, when water temperatures hit 65 degrees, such as it is now in May, most species begin to spawn. This is the time when they're closest to shore, such as these ones, these bluegill, that I saw in Clow Lake today. Now let's talk about fishing equipment that you need. So really, you just need a rod, some bait, a hook, and a bobber and to head out to the lake. So we're gonna go ahead and start talking about the rod. So this is the rod or the fishing pole and you can purchase this on its own or with a reel already attached. And when I go to the store and I'm looking for a fishing rod, especially, you know, for this kind of fishing, when I'm not looking for like a largemouth bass or, you know, some sort of kind of special like carp or something like that, just general panfish fishing. Um, I like to go into the store and hold onto the rod and just move it around a little bit and get to a feel for the action for different rods and then I just go by whichever one feels most comfortable in my hand and is good for the price that I'm willing to pay. And that's what I walk home with. So attached to the rod is the reel. And I have two different kinds of reels here. 
This is an open face kind. Um, this one is maybe a little bit easier to use. Certainly it can get tangled a little bit easier outside of the rod, but everything is on this bobbin and is not enclosed. So even if a tangle does happen, it's usually easier to fix. Now this is called a closed face rod or a closed face reel. And as you can see, everything is contained within here. And in order to fix it, you have to take this cap off and everything is wound around in a bobbin here, but they both work basically the same. The difference is this kind, the closed face sits on top of the rod, while the closed open face here is fished with the reel on the bottom of the rod. Okay, now we'll talk about the fishy line, and I recommend for panfish uh, poundage between 6 and 12 pounds, which means that that's how much pressure the line could be put under before it breaks. And panfish aren't super big, so 6 to 12 should be all that you need. In addition to the fishing rod, you want to bring along some lures, and if you're not going to use lures, you're going to use bait. You want to have some hooks, and typically when you bait fish, you have bobbers, your, your bait's underneath your bobber. Uh, you also want to bring along hemostats or forceps. This will let you um, grab onto the hook more easily than if you're using just your hands. Um, even if it's in the fish's lips, sometimes a rod, or this can be really hard to get a hold of. You also want to bring along some tin split shots um, for added weight. I like to use tin because lead is not so good in the environment. Even though these are little, I try to use tin instead. Uh, in case you run into a snag or if you have to release a fish by cutting the line, you also always want to bring with you either a knife or some nippers. Additionally, you can bring things with you like um, some bug spray maybe. You can also bring um, some sunscreen to protect you from getting sunburned. Uh, it's always a good idea to have along some paper towels or my favorite is to bring along baby wipes because the moistness in them, it kind of, it's really good at taking off slime or worm guts, things like that. Um, it's always a good idea also to have a some kind of first aid kit in your car when you're going on really any adventure to be honest not just fishing and I also like to sometimes bring along a camp chair just because it's nice to sit by the lake and relax as opposed to maybe standing there. Um, some more equipment that I like to take with me is I always like to go fishing with a ball cap um, just because it'll protect me from the sun keep the sun off my face and I can also sort of protect my eyes and I also like to take some polarized sunglasses. Any sunglasses will work but polarized really do take the glare off the water and make it easier for you to see the fish in the water. Don't forget to bring along a net as well. Uh, this will let you scoop the fish up after you catch them and let, give you the chance to keep them in the water as much as possible while you're getting ready to release them or maybe you wanna take a couple pictures with them. Now we'll move on to lures and baits. If you're bait fishing, you need to have a hook on the end of your line for the bait to be threaded onto. There are literally hundreds of different styles, shapes, sizes, and even colors of uh, hooks out there. For panfish fishing, I recommend size 8 to 12 hooks. Um, in this instance, the higher the number, the smaller the hook. And panfish tend to have sm fairly small mouths, and we don't want to have anything that's too big that they can't actually grab onto. Hooks can come in packs of either just loose hooks or hooks that are already strung on a piece of line called snell hooks. Either option is totally fine for panfish fishing. As for the style of hook, there are numerous kinds out there, but I recommend either a plain shank J hook, a bait holder, or a circle hook. Regardless of which style of hook you choose, you're going to want to either buy them barbless or make them barbless. Unfortunately, it's really easy to make any hook that you have barbless. All you need are your hemostats. To make this hook barbless, see that little barb right there? That's what we're going to want to get rid of. So all you need to do is take your hemostats and you grab right on to where the barb is and put some pressure on it and move the hook back and forth and it will crimp the barb down. So barbless hooks are always a good idea because it's a whole lot easier on the fish. Um, it doesn't get stuck as deeply in their lips or in like in their innards, like in their esophagus, um, and it makes it a whole lot easier to release them. Um, also, if you happen to get this in your finger, it's a whole lot easier to release you too. You'll need to have some kind of bait to put on that hook. This could be a mealworm, waxworm, maggot, or a piece of nightcrawler. Remember, the fish we're targeting have small mouths, so you don't need to put a buffet on the end of your line. I also use pieces of fake worm on my hook to imitate live worms. This could be a great alternative if you don't want to touch live worms. Lures are also a great option for panfish. These are typically fished by casting and immediately retrieving as opposed to fishing under a bobber. You can use small twisters, grubs, and curly tails. These are rubber-like imitations that you put on a hook, sometimes with a jig head. These mimic bugs and other prey items in the water. I've also used rooster tails for panfish. You can also use poppers, which are lures that float and are meant to imitate a struggling bug on the surface. 
Some popular lure colors that seem to work well with panfish are white, yellow, and chartreuse, which is like a yellow-green color. But how do you attach the hook or lure to the line? The most common used knots for this kind of fishing are the clinch knot, the improved clinch knot, and the special surgeon's knot for lures. There could be a class all about how to tie knots, so I highly recommend that you check out animatednots.com or the Fish and Boat Commission fact sheet, Notes on Knots, and practice at home before you get on the water. So today I'm going to fish with a bobber and a little bit below that I have some wax worms. To demonstrate how to fish for panfish, I want to start by showing a catch from beginning to end without interruption. Here I'm fishing just outside cattails close to shore. After the bait lands, I wind up any slack in my line. As the bobber moves with the current, I continue to take up slack. Having little or no slack in the line makes landing a fish a lot easier. If I were using a lure, I'd start winding right away. Whether you're using bait and a bobber or lure, the take feels the same, a quick tug on the line. With the bait and bobber, you'll see the bobber getting pulled by the fish. When you feel the tug or see the bobber start to get pulled, apply pressure on the line by lifting the rod or winding up a little. The quicker you react to a bite, the more likely it will be that you'll set the hook in the lip as opposed to letting the fish swallow it. You do not need to pull the fish very hard. In fact, if you do, you can rip the hook right out of the fish's mouth, likely injuring the fish. You could potentially launch the fish onto shore and the impact would likely kill it. Once you set the hook, keep gentle pressure on the line by continuing to wind. You don't want to wind very fast, just a slow, steady retrieve to bring the fish to shore. Once they're at the bank, use your net to scoop them up, but don't take them out of the water just yet. First, you need to wet your hands. I'll explain a little later when I focus on releasing the fish. Once your hands are wet, you can lift the fish out of the net, Bluegill. remove the hook, take a picture or two if you'd like, and return the fish to the water. Don't toss them in the water, just hold them upright, underwater, and let them take off on their own. You don't have to move them back and forth either. There you go. Did you catch that? This is a view of how the bobber will react when a fish bites your hook. And next is a demonstration of how you set the hook and bring the fish to shore. Okay, so I'm real close to the water because I caught a crappie. And today I'm gonna to show you how to take this fish off of the hook and release it safely. And we're by the water or real close to the water because you wanna have the fish spend as little time out of the water as possible. Um, it's just like if somebody held you underwater uh, and you couldn't breathe, when they're out of the water, they can't breathe. So you don't wanna keep them out on shore very long. Anything you're gonna do, whether it's take pictures or take the hook out, you wanna be quick about it. So the other thing you wanna have, so I have this fish in a net. And before I touch it, I'm going to make my hands wet. And that's because fish have a slime coat that protects them. And if you were to take your dry hand and wipe that slime coat away, this poor fish might be more susceptible to diseases after we release it. So you always want to touch fish with wet hands. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. So one hand, wet hands, and here's the fish. And it's in the net. And But to get it out, you kind of have to take them out of the water for a second. And you never want to grab a fish, no matter what fish it is, you don't want to hold them by their lips. So I'll try to hold this guy up so you can see him and it's horizontal. And this is a crappie. Oop, be careful. And I'll bring it up close and you can see that this crappie is caught right in the lip, which is perfect. That makes it easy to release them. And I've, remember, made my barb, or made my hook barbless, so it should be easier to release this fish. So I'm going to be very careful about it. And get this hook out. There we go. And because it wasn't a bar barbed hook, I could easily get that out. If the fish does swallow the hook deeply, just cut the line as closely as you can to the hook. If you try to pull the hook out, it could cause some serious damage. So he's back in the net because I want to show you how to hold a fish just in case you want to take a picture with one. So I've gotten him off the hook and now we're going to lift him out of the net. Again, my hands are wet. And you always want to hold a fish, no matter the fish, horizontally. 
So you don't want to, you know, hold them by the lip or hold them vertical because it puts a lot of pressure on their jaw muscles and on their jaws and it can hurt the fish. So even, you know, largemouth bass, I tend to hold them sideways because I'm afraid of hurting them. So here is our crappie and there's my picture with my catch. And we're going to go ahead and release this fish because remember I said I don't want him to be out of the water very long. It's a bluegill and I have it in the net and I want to show you how to release this one. So here we have it. You want to hold fish that you're releasing upright, hold them down in the water, and let them go on their own terms. Just like that. Well, there you go. Thanks for fishing with me today. I hope this video shows you how fun, interactive, and educational fishing can be. I mean, I hope you learned a lot from this video. And maybe if you've never gone fishing before or never tried fishing for panfish, now you'll be inspired to give it a try. And if you do get out there, you'll be able to see for yourself just how fun it is and how it is a great way to experience the great outdoors and is an excellent way to gain an appreciation for Pennsylvania's aquatic resources. So happy fishing everyone!